Airtime fairness is a feature we have developed uh, at Ruckus to be able to serve throughput well to clients which are of varying capabilities. Uh, clients can be transmitting at high data rates or low data rates, depending on the distance, the capabilities protocol-wise that are supported. And in any deployment, uh, good network practice requires us to be able to serve all kinds of clients well. Airtime fairness is a feature that lets us uh, serve throughput to clients with varying capabilities without necessarily starving a slow client, but also not dragging down the throughput of fast clients because of the presence of slow clients. So airtime fairness is built into the uh, Ruckus scheduler. Uh, the scheduler assigns uh, this concept of an airtime credit to every transmission that it does to a station. Um, airtime allocation, therefore, means that when you're doing this round-robin scheduling, uh, you are deducting from the credits for that station's queue whatever time is taken to transmit the packet, as well as some time that takes for the station to be able to access, uh, for the access point to be able to access the medium to be able to transmit that particular packet. Um, it is configurable um, from within our access points. Um, this is not a setting we think needs to be tweaked a lot by customers, uh, so we have not made it readily available on the you know, UI, but it is something that we can play with for, for our own testing. Now, this works with all types of stations. Um, the Ruckus access point will actually maintain and track um, the statistics about every station it transmits to. It does not really matter what the capabilities of the station are. Um, it is implemented on the access point scheduler side, so it works with, with all types. So in that scenario, we have, let's say, an access point, um, a station one, which is close by. Um, let's say it's doing 150 Mbps. Station two, which is far away, let's say doing 54 Mbps. Um, when we allocate equal airtime credit, let's say four milliseconds, we're going to be able to transmit within that airtime, uh, you know, several um, tens of packets to this station one and fewer packets to the station two. As a result, um, we will be able to actually get overall better throughput versus if we were to give equal transmit opportunities to station one and station two. Um, we can you know, run the numbers and what you'll end up finding is that um, station one would get as much throughput as it would have gotten if it was contending with another station with its own capabilities and station two likewise. But what's interesting here is that station one is not hampered by station two, nor is station two getting an unfair advantage because it's contending with station one. Right, and that's a great question. As you said, we have started to see more and more devices, you know, Apple, iPhone, uh, Samsung's have for a long time had uh, five gig uh, dual band radios. So the idea over here is that we do have dual band access points. We don't want all the stations to go on a particular radio. What we have found is that stations typically tend to prefer the 2.4 gigahertz band. Um, and as a result, even though you have more spectrum available on five gig, the 2.4 gigahertz band tends to get highly loaded. Uh, so we have a feature called band balancing that lets us intelligently select which of two uh, bands on a particular access point we should try to direct clients towards. And um, this allows us to be able to actually maintain a ratio of the number of clients on 2.4 gigahertz versus on 5 gigahertz and essentially direct clients on 2.4 gigahertz uh, who, who we know are capable of also operating on 5 gigahertz to try to, to, to influence them to move to the 5 gigahertz radio instead. So band steering was uh, you know, used uh, in the past where a large number of clients were only 2.4 gigahertz capable. And the clients that were 5 gigahertz capable, we wanted all of them to be able to move to the 5 gigahertz access point. Um, now we find that clients are actually increasingly dual band capable. And that approach of making any client which is 5 gigahertz capable move to the 5 gigahertz radio is not uh, really the right thing to do. The difference, therefore, is that in band steering, where we would indiscriminately try to move a, five, a, a dual band client to the 5 gigahertz band, now we will check to see how many clients we have on 2.4 gigahertz versus on 5 gigahertz. And then accordingly, we will try to you know, move a dual band capable client to 5 gigahertz if 5 gigahertz is lightly loaded. If not, then we can keep it on 2.4 gigahertz. What we want to look at is the overall available capacity on 
on the access point, regardless of whether it's on 2.4 gigahertz band or 5 gigahertz band. Um, as I said, we actually let the user configure what ratio of clients it wa they want on the 5 gigahertz spectrum versus on 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. So we look at the number of clients that are associated on 2.4 gigahertz, the number of clients on 5 gigahertz, and we try to see if you're close to the ratio where we want to be. Um, if not, we try to move it to the other band. Um, we have not seen uh, problems where a client will, for example, be stranded if you withhold probe responses. There are some clients which are insistent, as we discussed before, they uh, make selections based on, for example, RSSI in 2.4 gigahertz because it is, uh, you know, propagation is much better in 2.4 gigahertz. It's likely that we'll see the RSSI of the 2.4 gigahertz beacon stronger than the 5 gigahertz beacon. So yes, some clients will persist in trying to associate to the 2.4 gigahertz AP or vice versa. And we have a way to deal with that as well. We actually um, have a safety mechanism in place where a client, if it continues to try to associate on a particular band, eventually the AP will relent and it'll let the client on. So we try to make sure that, uh, you know, we, in, we try to influence the clients to move to the right band, but if they persist, we make sure the client is not stranded by these mechanisms. So actually it turns out the clients are not aware of the fact that they're close to another APU and this happens and this is a very widely reported problem. Uh, the stickiness happens because the clients after having made an initial access point selection do not scan frequently enough. So what you end up with is a scenario where a client is, for example, associated with a strong RSSI AP, the client walks away from the AP and now the RSSI is becoming weaker. Because the client really has no reference of another AP nearby because it has not scanned, it will continue to stay sticky with this particular access point. If, however, we were able to give the client a hint that, hey, your RSSI is really low, maybe you should scan, try to find another access point. In that case, uh, we find that sending the client that hint is actually very effective in making it scan and then find another access point. It usually will select the stronger access point and move to that access point. So the way we have implemented this is by monitoring the uh, RSSI of a client or other metrics, for example, throughput, and discovering when a client's performance falls below an acceptable threshold. At that point, we can actually disconnect the client that makes it scan and most of the time it actually selects a better access point and moves to it.